Welcome back. It's the middle of winter and I'm standing in a greenhouse surrounded by beautiful indoor plants. The subject of today's show is indoor plants or house plants. And we're going to talk to an expert who knows a heck of a lot about that subject. So follow me and let's go talk to Melissa. Well, welcome to the wonderful world of house plants. We're here in our greenhouse, greenhouse one at Western Nurseries with Melissa Utout. She's the expert, I'm not. I'm gonna ask Melissa a lot of questions about general things about house plants and uh, how we take care of them, the light exposure, how we maintain them, insects. So we just wanna start off with a real general area. Um, how do people go about selecting house plants? What's the first thing that they need to know? The first thing that um, I tell customers when they come in is to think about where the plant is going to be. Um, it's key. It's, um, a lot of people see flowering plants and think that they can throw them in their house when in fact if they don't have sunlight and the right conditions they, they need to be um, more selective about what they choose. Some plants will live in almost virtual Anything. darkness, right? Exactly. Some on the there other are. Hand, and they, they've they run the whole cultivated spectrum. a lot of um, a lot of plants to actually do that. Um, this philodendron is one of them. It doesn't need much of anything. Um, but the first thing that I that I ask people, um, a lot of people used to talk about sun exposure and they would say, oh, it's a south facing window and north. I found through the years that I'll go to somebody's house and they'll think that even though it's a south facing window, it could be, there could be a huge tree. Right, you know, right. Because people don't always know how much light actually comes in throughout they don't. the day. Exactly. And if you tell somebody that um, a plant needs three or four hours of sun, they don't know that that means direct sun and the important sun, the sun that's between 10 and 4 o'clock. Right. It can't be 7 o'clock to 10 o'clock. That right. doesn't count. It right. doesn't get enough. And that's enough. because the sun just isn't as strong? Exactly. Yep. Okay. Yep. I know in my house I've got a lot kind of in the, I remember buying house plants once and they told me this needs to go in a southeast or an east. Yeah, that was usually, north or that the, was the, the terminology directions. I think in the, back in the day when, when people first got into house plants, they, that's how they would gauge. Um, but like I said, I, I, I like to go to people's houses and actually figure out if they're going to buy a lot of plants and, and do some bulk large right. plants to make sure they're going to live. Right. Um, that we're not talking about it. It could be a south-facing window, but they close their curtains all the time. You right, know? right. So it's how these they are live things too. you really need to to look at the situation. Well, I also think. remember when I did buy all those plants. Only one really did well, and I still have it today. So I must be doing something right. But I lost maybe four or five other ones yep. slowly over time, and I think it did have to do with exposure and maybe it, the way yep. I was maintaining it as well. But yeah, exposure is the key. Exposure is the key. And these are two philodendrons, and I know yep. philodendron a little bit. And this is the kind down here. This that, is like the old school general philodendron that you see in, you see them all over the place. You see them in malls and they obviously don't have any natural sunlight in there. Right. Um, and they still do okay. And it just looks like it wants to go. Right? It does. It and you can train the them to go up. You can just let them drape. You can let them do whatever they want. And they don't need a lot of sunlight. They don't need a lot of sunlight. Filtered light. And another thing is they don't need a lot of water. Um, you can really dry these guys out. Yeah. Yeah. They thrive on neglect. A lot of these plants that make it. You said you bought seven plants and one made it. Mm -hmm. I probably watered Tried, them too much. You probably watered them too much. Um, lots of these plants thrive on neglect. The ones that, that really make it That's are the ones interesting because, you yeah. know, I'm more familiar with outdoor plants and those watering, you obviously, know, you, you can water a little more than generally than yeah, indoor they plants. Yeah, they need a like. lot more in the way of nutrients and um, it, it being fed and watered because okay. the sun is obviously absorbing And philodendron, one of the most popular genuses yes. of indoor yep. plants. And this is another type right here, right? This is a split leaf philodendron and people either love it or hate it. It's, um, it's a little bit big. Oh yeah. <laughs> and it, it gets even bigger. Look at that. It gets Look at the huge. size of the pot compared to the size of well, the plant. And that's the thing. Look at how happy that plant is. That's unbelievable. Um, in that size of a pot. They like to be tight in their pots. Yeah. They don't want to be sitting in a lot of soil and moisture. So they really you would think you'd have to put water on that very frequently because the roots. And are you don't. Shut. I wa I water that every two weeks, and that's in. Um, Unbelievable. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of people, when they come in, um, most people don't have full direct sunlight. I don't know too many people that actually have sunrooms. You know, and that's what that's really what the flowering plants um, need. The like full a conservatory sun. room exactly. with all glass. Exactly, with glass. It, like just filtered light through a window is not going to cut it. So if you have that on your house, 
it opens up a whole new oh, range of possibilities have, for absolutely. indoor plants. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's and then you're talking about a lot more care too, though a lot more water, a lot, a lot of more uh, fertilizing, transplanting. A lot of these guys don't need to be transplanted um, because because they're not taking too much water in. They're not. So the more sunlight in one of those conservatories, it's going to be hotter and the soil will dry out quicker yep. and watering becomes more regular. Exactly. Yeah. So there's a lot uh, to I was know. just at Tower Hill last week and they're huge, or huge plant. Oh, yeah. Yeah. gorgeous. But, you know, those guys are in there every single day, three times a day. Right. Really taking care of those things. They're not magically, even though they are house plants. Right. You know. So good note, if you're going to build a conservatory on your house, be prepared. Be prepared. <laughs> exactly. Plants. Yep. But, um... There are easy care plants, and they've come out with a lot, a lot of um, varieties. They've they've um, hybridized a lot of plants that can actually take low light, and this one is uh, an easy one, Dracaena. Mm -hmm. um, it comes in many different colors. You've probably seen it in purple leaves, um, reddish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Common, uh, very common. Very common. Dracaena. But Dracaena. Okay. Again, you just don't water these. You just ignore them yeah even though they appear to be very light and exactly could be a little bit root bound and thing. a lot of times people see this brown browning on the uh, leaves and think oh no it's dry and then they water it and then they're they're actually this is a this is over watering right here this browning right here yes. is the result of over watering it is yes so the signs of that would be toward the ends mostly towards the ends the tips usually show they they almost look burnt and they almost look dry and i can see why people do yeah. it but it really that's what ends up on and what do you recommend instead of watering just you can cut it off and it will on grow a back? plant like this that's not going to mend itself ever so even if you cut it it wouldn't re most people so clip you just it at the base go down to the bottom exactly okay. and get and rid it of it generally want to send it out will. the leaves yep. yep so is it um what do most people want a plant where there's going to be less likelihood of the browning? In other words, if I do overwater, it still doesn't show signs? Well, I think the key is just to not to realize that they don't need much water. Um, and when they see the brown, the, the, this tip right here, to, think, to not think, wow, it's dry, it needs more water, because you're starting a vicious cycle of actually killing the plant and mm. giving it root rot. That's interesting. Are there some varieties that are more... Forgiving. Able to withstand, yeah, forgive Th This is one of them. This is one of them. It can take water, it cannot take water, but really less is more. It will thrive and thrive if you just ignore it. I have one that's um, behind my couch that's been there for like 15 years, and I swear I water it once a month. That's great. Well, that's easy. Help. That's encouraging, <laughs> that actually. That is easy, yeah. What else do we have here? This is um, a Chinese evergreen, and this is a brand new variety. Um, this was overwatered in this greenhouse, so it's not as pretty as it should be. I can't tell. It doesn't look. I, it still tell? looks pretty. It, to me, I just know from, I'd pulled, I'd, pu I've pulled a few yellow leaves off the bottom. You mm -hmm. can see right here. Oh yeah. Um, but they, like I said, they keep coming up with new varieties to make it things more interesting. A lot of times, people come in and want flowering, gorgeous plants. Well, you really need to go with more foliage. So, um, in, in a in a house, usually. You, you can't like get a lot with flowering in the house. Not plants really. In general. It's usually broken down to flowering plants and to foliage plants. Right, right. Um, and the flowering plants, I tell a lot of people to treat more like a um, like a cut flower arrangement, more of a short-term type of thing, like the cyclamen. The, okay. Um, the so in other words, you're gonna throw it out. It's not gonna live that Yeah, long. I know people don't like to hear so that. But flowering it, house plants in general, there aren't many. There aren't too, too many. There's the peace lily we have over here. Um, the yep. Very, very, very common this little white flower. Oh yeah, I've seen that. Um, you've yeah. seen it everywhere. And the reason you see it everywhere is because it can take, obviously I just watered, sorry. <laughs> that's um, okay. It can take full sun or okay. it can take complete shade. And that's why you see them in offices and you see them in malls and you see them in houses. They just, they're easy, easy. Tough plants. A tough, tough plant. Okay. Another one is, I don't have it here, is an Aspidistra. Um, and um, they're a cast iron plant, and they they will live and live, and they can they can go full sun all day, or they could go with zero. And they flower a little bit too. They do not flower. They These don't. are foliage plants. Okay. The flower back to the flowering thing. I really, unfortunately, you do need to um, to look at it as more of a short term. You can try to get things to rebloom, but it's it's difficult. Right. Name a few though. There are a few. I know the jade that plant that we have coming. one right over here keeps flowering, right? The jade plant um, flowers like once every six years. Oh, that's so it. We that's just happen really, to have yeah. some that are in flower. <laughs> that's why they're so stunning right now. So something that does keep blooming are like these kawancho mm -hmm. over here. Mm -hmm. Different um, the colors. Penguin. Yep. Um, once this flower is, is spent, you just kind of 
pinch it back right here. Okay. And you might get a new shoot if you feed, if you fertilize. Yeah. Um, that seems really succulent. Oh, you know what's great that does rebloom a lot is this little guy. And he's not doing it right now, but it's a goldfish plant. Oh, yeah. So this See? is the start of a flower right here? It is. It does look and like a And that continues to bloom. It does need some direct sunlight. Okay. Um, and, and some fertilizer. Um, Let's talk about watering. Okay. And then maybe we'll talk about fertilizer. But okay. with watering, you're saying that you really got to lay off the watering. So what is the normal general best practice with watering? The best practice is actually to have a moisture meter. Um, should, we, we sell them here. Um, okay. It, it's the best tool you could have because, oh, over to the right. Um, oh, yeah. A lot of times you can see on the top of the soil, it looks like it's dry when in mm -hmm. fact, um, especially with the larger plants like the spittle leaf fig over here. Right. On the top, it might look dry when in fact it's holding a lot of water underneath. Okay, it's so this is a moisture meter. So this is a moisture meter that's tool. $6. You put it into the soil, you put it as far into the soil as you can. Okay. And it will, um, it will read right away. So right down as far as it'll let you go. Into the, yes, yeah, as, as much as you Are you trying to measure it down as far as, as, far as, as you can go? As far as you can go in, into okay. the middle of the plant, yep. And, um, so even if it's dry this far down, maybe an inch or two, you still don't want to water it necessarily. You want to measure it way down. To you want to get down as far as you can where it's important where the roots are sitting. Yeah. Um, because sometimes they're sitting in water and I've had a lot of people bring plants in that they think, you know, are actually dry and I put it on and it's off All the, the water's chart. collected at the bottom. Off yeah. the chart's wet and it takes a long time to dry out. So Interesting. Okay, really most advice. plants stay between two and three, that middle number. Yeah. Um, and you want to water it when it gets down to one or two? Exactly. Okay. Yep. That's simple. It is simple. Now, what about fertilizing? Um, fertilizing is important on uh, the flowering plants, especially like the little goldfish plant I showed you. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I. Um, so, yeah, walk over here and we'll grab a product or two. What the house, general house plant um, fertilizers are great to use. Um, you always want to water, you always want to feed. Um, they're water soluble, so you need to make sure that it's dissolved in the water before you feed. Is this not liquid gonna, or granular? That's what I'm saying. You actually will throw, you'll mix that in water. And so this is a powdery yeah. substance. Exactly. So yep. generally you're putting easy. a little bit in with a gallon or exactly. a half gallon. Exactly, yeah. And directions are on there, but I say yep. like every five or six weeks is a good. And this one has uh, the nice nitrogen, middle number. phosphorus. The big one is the phosphorus, which yeah, promotes blooming. Yeah, which promotes blooming. Okay. Yep. So a general house plant, usually that's the, the case. 30. The uh, yep. 15, 30, 15. Okay, so fertilizing houseplants in general, how often? And is it just for the ones that you want bloom or is it all it's foliage It's all too? plants. Um, and you'll see things like a little anemic when they need food, even the philodendron that's, um, I haven't fed that in quite a while, but it's starting, so it's starting to get a little bit of a yellow tinge. Right. And when that happens, um, people always get alarmed and wonder what's wrong. It could be that it just needs some fertilizer. Okay. So it's important to so remember. don't be shy. Don't be shy. Carry some at all times. Use it when you see signs. Exactly. Okay. Um, also, wow. never never feed a, a plant that's completely dry. That is one. Right. Always do it with a lot of water Always, at the yep. same time. Yes, okay. exactly. Now, let's go to insects. There's a few types of insects. Yep. Um, what are the three most common? Um, let's see. Mealybug, um, whitefly. Fungus gnats. I have a lot of people ask me about fungus gnats. Um, okay. They're less damaging to the plant, but they're the one bug that you can see. I think the key is to um, look for signs of, of and what bugs. what would some of those signs be? Some of those signs would be um, on a spider mite. Um, it, m there might be a yellowing of the leaf. And it really just kind of takes um, an eye to, to realize that you, you need to, you know, so you figure don't, out. So you don't necessarily see the insect always? No, especially with something like spider mite. Um, and that's why I think we get a lot of calls about fungus gnats because people see them jumping around on the soil. So they're... Okay. Um, the f well, I tell you what, we're going to segue. We're going to le learn a little more about insects uh, to our Did You Know segment with Ann Wells. Okay. So let's go talk to Ann for a few minutes about insects and we'll be right back. Hi, Melissa has told you a lot of wonderful things about houseplants and has left it to me to tell you about some of the woes of houseplants. But no fear, there are four basic pests that are pretty easy to deal with and they're things that you may come across um, in the course of being a houseplant owner. 
So the four most common troubles you may run into are fungus gnats, white fly, mealybug, or spider mites. Keep in mind that these are insects that are growing in ideal conditions. They're growing on plants in a nice, temperately um, maintained home where the temperatures are reliable, the water's reliable, and the sunlight's reliable, all because you love your houseplants. So the insects are taking advantage of this. Uh, keep in mind also that you have to be persistent. Unfortunately, dealing with pests on houseplants isn't a one-shot deal. It's something that you have to monitor and you have to do the required number of follow-ups. It's a little bit, think of it like um, making sure that you take all of your course of an antibiotic when the doctor prescribes it, not just the first couple pills. So fungus gnats. Fungus gnats are usually the result of kind of sketchy watering practices letting the soil get way too soggy, not draining the saucer beneath when the water runs through. Um, it's a good idea that uh, if you see a lot of little dark flying thingies that are clustered around your plant every time you jostle it, or even just flying around on their own, um, that you think about them being fungus gnats. Remove the top half inch of soil to get rid of the eggs. Make sure that you use a light pesticide regularly. We're talking every five to seven days and improve your watering practices. That's the single best way to get rid of them. Uh, mealybugs. Mealybugs look like little moving cotton balls, maybe about a quarter of an inch big. They're actually coated with kind of a waxy, hairy fluff uh, that protects them from drying out, protects them also from things like pesticides. One of the first things you can do is give that plant a nice spray, trying to knock down the population of the mealybug. And then use something like rubbing alcohol uh, soapy water sometimes, but rubbing alcohol is really a good deal. Or a product like Cetaflora, mix it with water. Use a cotton ball or a Q-tip and actually wipe off each cluster of mealybug. You're going to find these mostly along the stems and the bases of the leaves. You can't miss it. Looks like white cotton fluff. Make sure that you repeat this treatment every time you see them and then eventually you'll get a decent control. When it comes to spider mites, uh, you're going to see little tiny webbing underneath the leaves. You may see the insects themselves. They're smaller than a pinhead. Um, they are brown. And uh, the most obvious symptom is that you see the webbing. Spider mites have um, this phenomenon, the help I fall in and I can't get up kind of thing, if you knock them off the plant. So you start by putting it in the bathtub and washing that plant down. Knock as many of those down as you can. Then look for an insecticide that's listed for spider mites. In other words, spider mites has to be on the label. These mites are not your typical insect. They are not a true insect and they need a very specific uh, miticide so that you can knock down that population. Again, be sure to follow package directions. Uh, last but not least, white fly. Almost everybody who's kept a plant outside and brought it in has experienced white fly at one point or another. Can't miss it. Jostle the plant and all these white little moth-like things fly up into the air. Same idea, knock it down with a nice bath in the shower or a gentle watering wand hose down and then use a product that's listed for white fly. It has to have white fly on the label. This is a highly pesticide resistant insect to sort of the common pesticides, but there are very effective specific ones that are completely safe to use indoors. So again, the four basic pests, they're living in an ideal environment. You have to be persistent and you have to make sure that you find the pests that you're trying to work with on the label of the insecticide that you're trying to use and follow those directions you know, completely on the label. They'll tell you how often to repeat and you should have good success. Thanks very much. Well, Ann, that was awesome. Uh, you really taught me a lot and I really appreciate learning about insects I knew nothing about so that that was very educational we're back with Melissa and uh, we're gonna talk about certain categories of plants uh, citrus we'll talk about and then we'll talk about succulents and uh, we'll go look at an olive tree after okay. that so first let's talk about these citrus plants right in front of us what okay. do we have here the uh, citrus plants are uh, really popular and rightly so you actually they bear fruit in your house once a year um, and this one and they is smell fabulous. This one so is that's like a, lemon, a, right? a Meyer lemon, the most common um, lemon. Um, very fragrant. Doesn't very even look fragrant. like the flowers are opening up, except for a couple, and it's fragrant. Exactly. Yep. And those flowers have been on there for about 
four weeks now. So they, they last about does, five, they do, six does it, weeks. Is it, a, is it an easy one to keep flowering? We were talking about that well, earlier. Well, that's, the flower is the fruit on this. So oh, like, these are all fruits? Exactly. Do yep. they all turn into same, fruits? Same as apples or anything. Yep, that, that's that's the fruit right there. So, so they'll go through cycles of flowering go, and then fruiting exactly. and then the next year? Exactly, and that's, year. A, that's a yearly thing. Um, and depending on where we buy them, because obviously they're not grown here, I think we got these from California. Okay. And in fact, sometimes the tags will give you directions on the hole to uh, dig outside and I have to make sure I tell customers right. that not here. <laughs> You're not going to be putting that one outside, although they do really, really like to be outside in the summer. And, How um, does a plant know when it's inside all around that it has a cycle of flowering and fruiting? It does because it's already a certain age. Um, you can manipulate plants in, in different... So it's used to doing that. It's used to doing that, so that's what it's going to do. Given the climate it was given in before, the climate even it was though in, now the climate If you treat it right and do same. what it, your, as much sun as you can and as much of... I, I try to tell people that you really need to think about where a plant is from. Um, people will want to buy a fern and put it in a sunny window. I right. think about where the fern grows, that's where it wants to be. Right, same, right. you know, same concept. And this one wants sun. This one wants as much sun as you will give it. Yeah, um, yeah you picture the citrus, citrus groves in, in California or Florida exactly. and rose, it's always full sun. Yep. And then we have a, a lime. A little lime. And see, like, this guy's a young plant. That's a young plant. So mm -hmm. um, it could be that you, you could manipulate its growth and, and uh, fruiting by, by feeding it now, and it might change its so cycle a little bit. So through feeding, and do you move it around within your house at all? You don't. You know, with all plants, it's really important to to make them as established as possible. They really don't like to be moved around. Is there so, a better chance that that will be a reliable annual flower and fruiter than the, than the absolutely, little guy? Absolutely, absolutely, because it, it's been years um, doing that of, already. Do, of doing that, and then being cut back, and then doing it plants over again. Plants have memories. They do. So it might, <laughs> might be worth it if you really want production and more flowers and more fruit to, to, to go with the older plant. Size. I think a, a lot of people who come in to buy citrus do know that already. Okay. I, um, it's appealing to buy a little a little lime plant. Yeah. Um, you're not necessarily going to have success with it. You're going to really kind of need to research and feed and, and do all the right things to get this guy right, to. Right. Um, well, I would choose to, the bigger one. Yeah. <laughs> I think most people would. They do. And we sold a lot of them. Um, a lot of them are in tree form. Yeah. So they have a okay. big trunk. Okay, single stock, yeah. And that, that's more appealing to people for some reason. I actually like this one. It yeah. bears just as much fruit. Okay. Um, the and the fruit itself, how does it, is it just like what you buy in a store? Is it different? It is, uh, it depends on the variety. The Meyer lemon is something you see in the store, definitely. That's your typical lemon? Exactly. Um, okay. There are different li different limes and kumquats and things that um, certain, like uh, the Vietnamese restaurants really like to use a certain lime. They'll call and see if we have that lime plant. So yeah, they are. There are there are some uh, general and there. Are, um, and some when specific. you have the general, it probably tastes better because it's fresh and sweet and exactly. juicier, and more sugars in there. Yep. Yeah. The only one, the one myth um, on the citrus, the Kalamandan orange is a popular house plant. Very cute little leaves, and it's a Kalamandan orange, but the fruit itself is very bitter and not. Okay. So people get so excited that it's going to bear fruit, but yeah. it's not really edible. Not edible. Okay. It's, it's cute, but. Well, that's citrus. And then we're going to talk about, now we're going to talk about succulents. Yep. And succulents, can you categorize succulents into uh, general categories? or You is it can. Um, cactus and succulents are just uh, really how they hold their water. The um, cactus hold their water in their stem. Okay. Um, and and this is a, an odd case because it's called a baseball cactus. Oh yeah. That would be considered the stem. Okay. So that's where it's holding its water. That's why it doesn't need a lot of water. It will water itself when it needs to. So cacti that look like this. Yep. Don't need as much water because they have a big stem. Well, no, uh, cactus in general and succulents don't need a lot of water okay. because um, they hold the now water about, in the stem and same. How about, how about the, sun? Oh, this one too. Sun, as much sun as you possibly can on cactus and succulent both. Okay. And this one you're saying holds the water in, in, in the, these um, stems In here. the stems. Okay. And that's just what makes a succulent different than a cactus. The succulents here hold the water in their, in their leaves. Okay. Like the jade plant, um, you really don't need to water a jade plant much at all because it holds its water. In the leaves. And that's what they do in the desert. That's where they do where... What about in the roots? Not much, huh? Not much, and that's the whole idea. That's why you don't need to water much. They're more meant for anchoring. They're Exactly. Okay. Yep. I'm looking at something here that I can't even believe is alive. This is, it looks like these little plants are glued right in to this they, piece of wood. They are, in fact, glued. Yep. 
They're Tillandsia. Um, they're air plants, so no soil is required to keep these guys alive. And they hold and their moisture in the leaves? Exactly. And um, the bromeliads, which we don't have, are related, and they ha usually have a little cup, and you see them with the funky big flowers. Okay. They hold the water in, in their little cups. So and even if this were on a wall, it would still manage to hang on to enough that moisture? Would, you do need to mist this. Mist this. Like once every three days or so. And that's why terrariums work well for these two sometimes, right? Exactly. They contain the moisture in the exactly. glass. Exactly. You just want to make sure you don't keep them too moist. But, yep, they don't need... They don't need... Um, Soil, which is cool. That's amazing. Do they generally live fairly long They really lives? do. I, I give them to friends who can't keep plants alive, and I, I go to their houses and see that they're still on their fridge, glued wow. on. It, on yeah, their it's fridge. neat. It, yeah, it's pretty cool. Do they grow a lot more than this, or do they, they generally stay small? They aren't fast growers. They, they, they stay small. They do get a little bit funky. Um, they get little shoots, I and they do flowers. flower. Yep. Amazing. They flower, too. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Wow. Okay, one last plant we're going to talk about is the olive right here in front of us. This one, you told me earlier, actually bears, it's the, a Spanish olive, right? The manzanillo, yep. It's um, like the little green olives you see in the store. That's, it will without bear the red, fruit. Without the maraschino or whatever with those the, <laughs> red pits are. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay. So, yep, they are pitted olives that um, will bear fruit the same way as the citrus um, bears fruit. Same treatment, um, sun. So the flowers turn into... Olives. Yes, exactly. This. And yep. will these grow rapidly? It looks like it might. They are slow growers, actually. Are they? So I was watching a movie a couple weeks ago and saw the huge, it was in Spain, I just saw huge, huge olive trees. And they there. can get 15, 20 feet tall, right? Exactly. And it, this is more of a novelty, like I can grow an olive in my house, okay. you know, at so a small scale. So this one's meant scale. genetically to stay small. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Well, very good. We've covered a lot of different types of house plants, and I thank you very much, Melissa. You really uh, no problem. Uh, gave our viewers a great education today. I learned a lot. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show. I certainly learned a lot. I want to thank Melissa and Ann for all their expert advice. There sure is a lot to know about houseplants, but you can succeed with them. And uh, if you have any questions, further questions for Melissa or Ann, send us an email. We'll be happy to respond. And we will see you next time.